Let's break down every motorcycle engine you'll come across. I'll explain what each one is, how it feels to ride, and what you should know before you choose a bike. Let's get into it. Let's start with the simplest type. The single cylinder engine, or what riders often call a thumper. It's got just one piston doing all the work, and that makes it light, compact, and easy to maintain. You'll find these engines in small commuter bikes, dirt bikes, and beginner-friendly motorcycles. Bikes like the Honda XR1, 50L, Suzuki DRZ400, or Royal Enfield Bullet 350 run on singles. What's it like to ride? A single-cylinder engine gives you good low-end torque, meaning it pulls well at low speeds. That's why they're great for city riding and off-road trails. The downside? They can vibrate a lot at higher speeds, and you won't get the top-end power or smoothness of multi-cylinder bikes. But if you want simple, reliable, and cheap to run, single cylinders get the job done. If you're finding this breakdown helpful so far, hit that like button and subscribe. There's a lot more to cover, and you won't want to miss it. Next up is the Parallel Twin, also called an inline twin. This engine has two cylinders placed side by side, sharing the same crankshaft. It's a really common setup because it balances power, smoothness, and cost. You'll see it in bikes like the Kawasaki Ninja 650, Yamaha MT-07, and Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. So, what's it like on the road? A parallel twin gives you more power and smoother performance than a single cylinder, but it stays compact and lightweight. Depending on how the crankshaft is designed, it can feel like a V-twin or even an inline four. It's versatile, good for commuting, touring, or weekend fun. There's not much to dislike, but some riders find them a bit plain compared to more exotic engine types. Still, if you want solid, reliable power with decent character, the Parallel Twin is hard to beat. Now let's talk about the V-Twin, an engine with two cylinders arranged in a V-shape. This design is famous for its torque and sound. You'll find V-Twins in bikes like Harley-Davidson's, most Ducatis. They call it an L-Twin, but it's really a 90-degree V and Moto Guzis. So, what's it like to ride? A V-Twin gives you strong, low-end torque, meaning you get that satisfying pull as soon as you twist the throttle. It's great for cruisers, but it works in sporty bikes, too. The sound? Iconic. That deep, throaty rumble is part of what makes V-Twin bikes feel alive. There are a couple of downsides. V-Twins can run hot, and depending on the design, they might need more frequent maintenance especially when it comes to valve adjustments. Next up is the Inline Triple, a three-cylinder engine that sits between a twin and a four. You'll find it in bikes like the Triumph Street Triple, Yamaha MT-09, and Triumph Tiger 900. What makes an Inline Triple stand out is how it combines the best of both worlds. You get more torque down low than an Inline Four, but it revs smoother and higher than a twin. That means solid grunt when you roll on the throttle and a rush of power as the revs climb. The sound is another reason riders love triples. It's got a distinct growl that builds into a wail at higher RPMs, unique and addictive. Inline triples feel compact and well-balanced, making them great for both city streets and backroad blasts. The only downside is they're less common, so aftermarket parts or tuning options might not be as plentiful as with twins or fours. Now we get to the inline four, the engine most people picture when they think of superbikes. This design has four cylinders lined up in a row, sharing a crankshaft. You'll find inline fours in bikes like the Honda CBR, 600RR, Yamaha R1, and Suzuki GSXR 1000. What's it like to ride? Inline fours are famous for their smoothness and high revving nature. They're built for speed, offering serious top-end power that really comes alive at higher RPMs. If you like the idea of chasing red lines and hearing that screaming exhaust note, this is your engine. The flip side? Inline fours can feel a bit soft at low RPM, especially compared to twins or triples. They're also a little wider, which can affect the bike's overall packaging. But if you're after pure performance and smooth power delivery, an inline four is hard to beat. Now we have the V4, a four-cylinder engine arranged in a V-shape, kind of like combining two V-twins. You'll find this engine in bikes like the Aprilia RS V4, 
Ducati Panigale V4, and Honda's legendary RC30. The V4 is all about compact power. It's narrower than an inline four, so it helps centralize mass, and it delivers power in a smooth but aggressive way that many riders say feels more connected to the road. What's it like to ride? A V4 gives you the high revving rush of an inline four, but with stronger torque down low, almost like a twin. And the sound, it's a deep, raspy growl that turns into a scream at high RPMs. Downsides? V4s are expensive to build, often found only in premium or race-inspired bikes, and they can be more complex to service. But if you want top-tier performance, it's hard to beat. Next up is the Boxer Twin, also called a flat twin. This engine has two cylinders that stick out sideways, opposite each other. It's most famous in BMW's R-Series bikes, like the R1250, GS, or R9T. What's special about the Boxer Twin is its low center of gravity. Because the cylinders are flat and wide, the bike feels super stable, great for touring and long-distance riding. When you ride a Boxer Twin, you'll notice smooth, steady torque. It pulls cleanly from low RPMs, and the engine feels planted on the road. Plus, maintenance like valve adjustments is easier because the heads are right there, out in the open. On the downside, the width of the engine can limit lean angle, and in a tip-over, those cylinder heads are the first to hit the ground. But for comfort and character, the Boxer Twin is a classic choice. Now we have the Flat 4 or Flat 6. Big, wide engines you'll mostly find in touring bikes like the Honda Goldwing. Like the Boxer Twin, the cylinders are laid flat, but here you've got four or six working together for ultra-smooth power. This setup keeps the center of gravity low, which helps these heavy bikes feel stable, especially at highway speeds. What's it like to ride? Flat 4s and 6s are all about smoothness. They deliver quiet, effortless power with almost no vibration. You can ride all day without feeling worn out. These engines are perfect for long-distance touring where comfort matters most. The downsides? They're big, heavy, and wide. So they aren't ideal for tight city riding or aggressive cornering. And when it comes to maintenance or repairs, things can get pricey. But for cross-country comfort, they're hard to beat. Next up is the Crossplane Inline 4, an engine that changed how people think about inline fours. Yamaha introduced it with bikes like the R1, and the idea is simple. Instead of even firing intervals like a normal inline four, the crossplane crankshaft gives uneven firing. The result? You get more usable torque at lower RPMs, and a sound that's more like a V4 than a traditional inline four. On the road, a crossplane inline four feels grunty and connected. The torque delivery is smooth but powerful, and it gives you better traction when you're hard on the gas out of corners. Riders love the unique growl it makes. It's raw and aggressive without being harsh. The trade-off is that cross-plane engines are usually found on high-end bikes, so they're more expensive. But if you want the best of both worlds, torque and top-end power, this is a winner. Now we've got something rare, the rotary engine, also known as the Wankel engine. Instead of pistons moving up and down, a rotary uses a spinning triangular rotor inside an oval housing. You'll see this design in a few unusual bikes like the Suzuki RE5 and Norton Commander. What's it like to ride? Rotary engines are smooth and compact. They produce power in a steady, linear way and love to rev. The RE5, for example, had a surprisingly refined feel for a 1970s bike. They also make a unique whirring sound that's totally different from piston engines. So why aren't they common? The downsides are big. Rotary engines run hot, can be tricky to cool, and have higher emissions. They're also more complex to service, with parts that are harder to find today. Cool tech, but not practical for most modern motorcycles. Last up, we have the electric motor. No pistons, no crankshaft, just pure, instant torque delivered by an electric motor. Bikes like the Harley-Davidson Livewire, Zero SRF, and Energica models show what electric power can do on two wheels. What's it like to ride? The first thing you notice is the silence. No engine noise, just a slight whine and the sound of the wind. Twist the throttle, and the power is instant. There's no waiting for the revs to build, no gears to shift, 
just smooth, direct acceleration, it feels effortless and, honestly, addictive. The downsides? Range and charging time are still the big limitations. On a long ride, you'll have to plan your stops carefully. And some riders miss the sound and character of a traditional engine. But for clean, fast, low-maintenance riding, electric bikes are the future. That's every major motorcycle engine explained. Hopefully, this helps you understand what's powering your ride or your next one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment about your favorite engine type. Thanks for watching.